This is actually just a short episode about the salvage material world. That's that's not actually the world of Madonna. You think remember her? I think I remember her from my, my music days. Look at this grain. Let's see if you can see that. That's each line is a year of growth. So in a board like this in old wood, you can actually count ten years there. 10 more years there, 10 more years there, 10 more years there. And it goes all the way across. Almost 100 years of growth to get that board. Now these boards, for example, when you see 5 inch wide bead board like this, it's called bead because this is called a bead in the middle. It's called beaded board or bead board. And it's usually used for wainscot. You usually see it going up and down on a wall like this. Now, that's different. Now this actually has got some, whoa, some very valuable burled pine hmm can't really see it unless you put some tongue oil on ah, tongue oil get it um, and then you can kind of see the colors of the old days I love them some of the blues the greens even the whites and milk paint when you scrape it off it sticks to the soft tissue comes off the hard tissue and gives you this beautiful zebra effect I love that zebra effect on things. Um, piles of this. This was actually milled in 1895. Back in a time when trees were... This is the length, by the way. Shoot. Holy cow. Anyway, goes back in here a little more. Goes all the way down almost to where my truck is. How long is that, Brad? Here's how we find out. We go out here. Old-fashioned way. No tape measures stand out here, and I know every time I take a step, I take about a yard, about 36 inches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, holy cow, 21 feet. Now you go to a store today and say, hey, I want some five inch wide, 21, 21 foot long boards, no knots, clear. And I want it to be beaded in the middle and tongue grooved and have some really cool looking grain to them oh, i got it and and oh yeah would you please do all that and get it to me uh tomorrow oh yeah yeah they'll be laughing at you at every store you go into big box store we don't do that we don't do that i'm well, sure you do if you got it we got it now how do you get it you go out and take it off old houses, old buildings, old stores. And it doesn't take that long to take it off, frankly. You could probably drop a board, 21 foot long board with two people. Take you about five minutes each. Now, what's that board worth? Well, okay, here we go, watch. Ball. Oops, big ball. Very intense dog. And suspense. There we go. Ooh. Okay. Point of this. If I pull that board off there and it's worth, uh, say, 5 to $7 dollars a square foot, and that's before the prices of the lumber went up. Well, that's a lot of money. Hey, Mirabelle. Oh, interesting. Yes, tall growth trees. They were 135 feet tall. Had to be um, 185 years old before they even got big enough uh, to be mature, and then they grew the heart. And that took another four or 500. Uh, American chestnut, we actually have some, not down here in Texas, we don't have American chestnuts, Tony, but we do have some, a friend of mine has some over in uh, another place, um, toward Virginia there, that's a bunch of it, and uh, he wants to get some of that out there. And uh, he's got a bunch of that chestnut over there. Uh, that'd be Tim Trivet. Um, and you want to get a hold of him, he's usually on here. You can find him on online, on, on Facebook. A great young boy, but um, he's maybe going to come out here. This is a bunch of uh, tile, by the way. Now, for those of you who haven't been uh, to the Orient, they make a tile over there. This is clay, baked with uh, cobalt on the outside. This would be like on the ridge, coming down a hip. And then you have pieces that actually, look at these weird things. 
I have a little teeny bit of it around here. And uh, that's one of the things we have available, by the way. Oh, yes. If somebody wants to do something really fine, that lasts for 300 to 500 years in China. In Japan, where it's made, that when that was originally shipped to the United States, <clears throat> mind you, back in uh, 40 years ago, I was just a kid coming into Austin, 30 years old. They were putting it on a big old condo complex. One of the most expensive condo complexes ever put together. Hey, Michael. Tomball, Texas. Good. Not too far away. Delinda, oh, I see you online all the time. Hey, I hope you're feeling better, girl. You need to get yourself grounded. Come down here and visit someday. This is a little bit more. That's all the trim and pieces, all that stuff. Yeah, it seems at uh, one point down the road, 40 years, they got bored with that color. You know, it looked like San Tropez with the white walls and the blue roof and the condos, which means you get one little condo unit and whoever has most of it gets to vote. And they decided to paint it and... Uh, Thank you, I'm so happy they did. But the problem is they picked a the color that didn't match. Didn't match the roof. Mind you, I'm, it's a condo complex on the side of a cliff kind of thing on Lake Austin. And they painted that mauve over that kind of ugly color. I don't like it either. But they decided to paint the building that way. It didn't match, so they decided to take off that $750 per 10 foot by 10 foot area stuff with all the trim. And replace it with some American made concrete tile that'll break in a good hailstorm, which we just happen to have a few of those down here. The wisdom of the people that figured that one out, I don't know, but fortunately, somebody had to haul it all away and take it away and, and get rid of it for them. And I uh, can't help myself, you know. Sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do. But if anybody happens to want some of that, I happen to have a little extra that I'm maybe not gonna use it all. Uh, these are bricks, not really bricks, these are pavers. Check these out, man. 1901, May 21st. Oh, you, this is going to be backwards to you guys, I'm sorry. Um, I forget I'm on the, the camera does backwards on one side. These are, say on the front of them, 1901. They're out of, uh, out of Missouri, I brought them in. Um, actually out of Quincy, Illinois, and Missouri on the border there. Um, anyway. Those are not selling. They cost too much to get here. Look at some of this lumber. So that's probably 16, 20 foot long beams. And this is all like it was roofing, a lath. And uh, it's rough sawn. You can see the look. Even diamond saw cut. Um, I don't know if you can see. Wait a second. Ah, da, da, da. Okay. Can you see? Oops. All right. Anyway. And then there's a bunch more beadboard. And this is the thin stuff here. Um, it comes in several thicknesses. People don't realize that. There's actually... Um, Three eighths, half inch, five eighths, three quarter, um, and then double sided, double beaded, which means it's beaded on both sides. And oh, that's supposed to be covered up. And then um, there's also, so some of this you'll see is even single beaded or just flooring, three quarter inch thick, tongue and groove. That's the tongue on one side, groove on the other. Luckily, they use words for that that actually sound like what they are. And that's how you put a floor together. And if you have that floor, you put it together using what's called oops, blind nailing. Ha, ah, there we go. I got this. And uh, the blind nailing lets you go ahead and hide the nails. All the old guys used to do that. Um, when can you visit? Oops, when do you want to visit? Oh, look at that. Beep, 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 beep. Sorry about that. Um, I'm actually here most of the time. It's the other people. Over here, oh. I hope you can see some of this. I'm a wood snob, man. When I see curly pine, very rare actually. One board in 2,000 feet will be curly. Um, I get kind of giddy. And then I have other stuff. Plywood, oh yeah, plywood $30. I saw somebody said that, $30 a sheet for plywood. And you know what? I was actually into saving plywood a long time ago. Nowadays, that's it. Yeah, pull the nails out, yes, but still, that's $20 a sheet. $20 a sheet. Uh, Luling and Gonzales. I have warehouses in both places, but I stay in Luling. The Gonzales warehouse is about 130,000 square foot still. Too much, too much. We're trying to get that emptied out, moved out, sold. Hey, Ron. Peace to you too, dude. Thank, thank you. Um, this is all out of a cotton seed warehouse 
cotton warehouse in Cuero after the floods in 98. And that is actually cottonseed oil soaked all the way through. The blue moon, if you ever come here and stay in the blue moon, the floor is done with that. And you can actually have water beat up after almost... I milled it, built the house 10 years, 15 years ago. It's still saturated. More of those... I brought those in until it turned out it was almost a dollar a brick nowadays cost of transport. My very first house called the mascot. I'm going to get back in. The noise is getting crazy. Um, I wanted to bring you in. Actually, I was going for the hardware room. Have any of you seen my, my hardware collection? From Newton Falls, Ohio. Wow, that's a long ways away, man. Hello, hello. Hey, hello again. Yes, I'm back up again. This is actually an informational tour where I'm supposed to keep talking about materials. Back over here, I have some that are 24 inch wide slabs. Not everybody appreciates this, so I, you guys get bored about materials. I gotta put a building up. I took a building down over there in Gonzales. I gotta put it back up again. Anybody like motors, boat motors? I got one sitting there. I need to sell it, I don't want it. Um, uh, here, look at this. Now, just for comparison, all right, look at my hand. And the board's actually out here. So, to my wrist where that bracelet is, that's the edge of the board. So that's 21 inches at least, 28 inches across. Not a short board either. Some of these boards like this, this piece right here is notched. And this piece was notched here. This held the joist that went up the top. There were 14 by 14s. And this was half of the 52 foot long piece that made up the railroad roof in St. Louis Nashville line. These are part of the, see how they've got this on top? This is actually lamb beams. See this nastiness? But that's how they made the Kelly Air Force Base valet parking for the generals and everything, the officers club over there in Kelly before they shut it down. They spent $15 million to build an officer club that they kept about 10 years and then they tore it down because they closed the base. And in Texas, they rent our bases. They don't own bases like they do in other states. Look at these beams. That's got to be 30 feet, 40 feet, somewhere in the 30, 40 foot range. These are some of the things I need to go ahead and probably sell. I'm going to have to use them up. And so far... I ain't got enough people to use them all up because I can't move and do and build all this by myself. So I'm having to go and get rid of some stuff. That would be different if I'd had a family of 10 kids or 8 kids or a bunch of people to work with me without having to pay them, train them, let them go off and make a bunch of money someplace after they got all that training. But that's what we do it for, right? Plant the seeds. Oh, yeah. We're going to see how far we get. I'm going to lose, lose, possibly. Inside that room is part of my hardware collection, which is way too big. Um, I was actually the president of the Antique Doorknob Collectors of America for one year and vice president for five years. And uh, I got into it a little too much at one point. Hey, anybody need an axle? How about a... A wagon axle. How about the harness to go with it? And this is in case you want to cook outdoors. Uh -huh. This is going to be used for our garden. That's Nate's doing. And by using French tiles, we're able to keep from having the weeds grow up around the plants. I saw this on a YouTube video and we're doing it. This is all edible cactus. It's called spineless. And uh, we eat it down here. It's called napolitos. And you can slice it up. And just like uh, like pieces of meat in your breakfast. Woohoo! And uh, there's one of my doors. Now, what do you do if you take a new door and put it on the front of your house or your building? Does a new door give you that impression? No, but an old door, you see the glass. Now, you can't legally do that if it were a business. Luckily, this is just my garage, my residence, my studio, but it's not a business. Otherwise, it's your safety glass. If the safety glass in, well, you ain't gonna get the beautiful reflections and all that stuff. But those, that's what was there originally. Yes. Luckily, we're not open anymore. Now, oh, you gotta stay out there.
So, what I'm gonna do is show you a little bit now. Here, I'm gonna show you one of my favorite things. Oh, what's the other thing? I have two of these, match pair, of Tiger Oak. They were used to be in the middle between two rooms in Arts and Crafts house. And then inside, for example, now here's why I collected. I don't know if I can look at that. Oh wow, isn't that beautiful? That is bubbles inside of a piece of glass. And the baby version of that, which you can see here, but look at the inside. Totally different. And so it took me a year and a half asking questions and being involved in the doorknob collectors of America to find out what the story was. So here we can go ahead and see. I need to add some lighting. Huh? How's that? Yeah. Uh, there you go. Look at these. This is French. You can tell by the size of the shank on it. These are American. And that's when we had to switch over from using manganese, which caused them to turn purple, the glass turned purple, in the sun. This is a robin's egg. Yeah, beautiful. And um, so I have a lot of globes. You want to have a crystal ball in your house and see the future. You can do it that way. They used to have vanity knobs. This was a university, for example. I don't know if you can see that. And um, all sorts of different kinds. This was all hand cut, leaded glass, circa 1830s. No electricity. Little boys, 12 years old, cleaning up, bringing in the coal to get the fire hot, to make all the glass. There was over 250 glass patterns. This is actually a cheaper one, it's actually molded circa 1900 faster cheaper but still looks like it's hand cut it's not um and the same thing people don't understand is um there were so many patterns prior to 1900 uh goodies goodies um the point is whoops sorry about that i love old things don't you um let's see now why did i show you this kind of stuff well some people are interested um, again, changing a door out inside of a building can make it a much prettier environment. There's another one. Oh, incidentally, uh, it's kind of trashy in here, but look at this. This is all the pieces that go with that tile. The valleys, end caps, these are fun. So I made a, a book rack using these for the dividers. There's some of those. Again, creative, dusty, but creative. Pieces you can always use, like this would take these out of a house. Well, why would you want to take it apart and put it back together again? Just keep it together and use it. Um, oh man, the things you find in attics. Um, the backs of a, a dresser that comes the back of a desk instead. And in my place, for example, you're liable to stumble on all sorts of things. Art Nouveau, Doorknob, for example. Um, this was actually being modified. I was modifying that to use for something else. But again, these are unusual. That's actually a part of a, a type of hardware that wasn't used very much because it didn't last very long. The reason I'm showing you all this again, okay, now imagine you have just a, a hallway and you put something like this on the end of it. Does that change the look of it? Always so you can see the glass. Now, this is called snowflake glass. We have curly glass, all sorts of different curly, squiggly. Now, I had made up, at one time I bought a, a few things, including a hardware store, in order to get hardware cabinets. Now, I'm going to show you something. I hope you can see this. For those of you that are nuts about hardware, this is what we used to have just for the doors, just for rosettes. Imagine, look at these are different styles. And uh, these are the fancy ones, um, all part of 1900. Beautiful patterns. Oh, now, oh, I want to tell you something. Jeez, you see there too. Okay, once upon a time. Woo, where is that? Okay, can you see here? All right, study this for a moment. Backwards. Okay, see where my finger is over here. And then see where this pattern is right there. Yeah. 
There's a doorknob that goes with that. Societies, cultures. Well, they're represented by a lot of different things. Symbology, symbols. Looks kind of like a C, doesn't it? Seashells. Um, all of them had meaning at different times. And so you might look at something and go, oh, wow, that's just an interesting design. So I can get that lighting right. Well, it is an interesting design, but sometimes it has meaning. The one I showed you a second ago had faces hidden in it. Little faces. And you think, oh my goodness, what kind of face would that be? Look at this. Oops, let see here. A ship. Floating ship. Um, the faces are amazing. Here's one from the U.S. Treasury. This was a doorknob. Right, right there. Uh, yeah, doorknobs on the U.S. Treasury, for example. And since we had tax money, why not have them on the Board of Education for Chicago schools? I mean, after all, that's only a couple pounds, right? A pound, probably a good pound of metal. Now it'll be sold to China. They'd pay a lot, not really, but they get it, and then we go ahead and have them melt it down and send us back some toys. Public schools, I mean, it's all backwards, guys, I'm sorry. Public schools of New York, just so you know, city of New York. They had lots of money back in those days, didn't they? Or at least tax, tax, tax dollars to go ahead and spend with their friends. Now, remember, the, um, this is the back of the knob. Now, this was done prior to 1895. The Golden Age door hardware was 1875 to 1895. During that period of time, people actually treated this like hardware. Hardware was the real estate jewelry. This is cast iron with a brass band to hold it together in a very popular pattern known as an uh, Asian Oriental sort of pattern. Whoops, there you go. Uh, bamboo. It's called broken. Uh, There's broken leaf and bamboo. This is bamboo pattern. There you go. See it. Anyway. Why am I saying that? Remember that one I mentioned to you about? Oh, here's another bit. I'm not sure if you can see. That. Yeah. You can see there's lots of things. Oh, yeah. Oh, example. It's not what you have, but knowing what you have. So I am a, a, a collector. And I actually sponsored the Antique Doorknob Collectors of America. And they came, and we had a big event. And I sponsored it at San Antonio. See this plate? That's F, actually, backwards. Okay. That Sullivan was the designer of the Fitzgerald Hotel in Chicago. Now, I didn't know that, but I thought it was beautiful. So we had a convention and all the other collectors came and the president came with the club. He came and all came to my store. And I had a couple of those for sale. I think I was asking like 200 bucks. Oh my God. He talked me down to about 100 bucks. And as he was checking out, he was so kind and told me that he already sold one of for $750 before he got to the checkout lane. And yeah, I was going to keep on the other one. He wasn't going to leave it with me. Um, and that's how I found out how much they were worth. Wasn't that nice? This is a beautiful piece, too. All these pieces were made. This is called a, a jewelry-grade brass, meaning it's got so much copper in it, it stays red. It doesn't start off yellow. It starts off red and almost reddish. There's so many things out of that period that are so incredible. When you look at what they did for just a... This is a, a doorbell puller. So what happened? What happened to all this real estate jewelry? You know, you got state jewelry and then you got real estate that you put your jewelry on. This is a cool one. This is again, that goes up and down, lifts a chain. Oops, I'm sorry. See how that works. So that would be on the wall. Oops. And you pull it back. See, it goes that way. And that, that pulls a chain and it rings your bell in the old days. And there's several ways of doing that. Um, because everybody had doorbells, didn't have electricity to speak of. You had chains, and, and the chain then would pull. Here's another sweet one here. You can see that little nodule, little nodule sticking out. Ding dong. Um, when I talked about the, this is when you used, can you see this? I see. See the purple? Okay. They turned purple over time in the sun because they were using manganese at the time as a lubricant in the mold before they switched over to selenium after the war because the Germans didn't want to give us any more of their, uh, their selenium. This is actually an entire um, set for a screen door. 
in 1880, 90 range, 80s. And you can tell they put a lot of time and effort. You can't really see the purple in here. But as the sun glows, the ultraviolet causes it to turn purple over time. There's a few things in here. Um, the purple, a lot of times you could cheat. That's what one company did. At one time, they started putting all the old knobs. Oh, here's one. This is actually a starfish. There we go. And um, so they would put them into the uh, strawberry um, sanitizers because they put strawberries in ultraviolet and cook them. It's called cooking the knobs and get them really purple. I made a lot of money off of that. Oh, I do have a few more doorknobs. Now, oh yeah, I want to get back to this because this is pertinent. In a time, in a time when craziness can happen, I want you to look at something and understand. Radicalism is going around a long time. This is a doorknob. Circa. Early 1900s. What's wrong with this doorknob? In a time when they were not considered bad, nothing. Let me see. Whoop. Look at those hats, those hoods. With the eyes cut out and the tops bent over. Well, that would just might make you wonder. Hidden symbology? Yes. Now, that was considered to be a respectable organization one time. A lot of things that Symbols have meaning. And right now, what's happened is we bastardized a lot of symbols. Bastardized them. Uh, the Nazi swastika sticker was actually a, a symbolic symbol at one time in the Indian culture. And so he used things that were supposed to be good to go ahead and represent bad. I just want to give you a cruise on, look at these concave knobs. The inside's all done. Some of these, like this, these are like, it's called the Colombian style with little fox heads on it. Um, inside, outside, now, prior to 1900, there was 50, no, 5,000 styles. I have a bunch of these A's. I had them because my son's name was Adam. Um, and I have a lot of extras now. All these doorknobs, some of them were made back in a time super valuable. Um, these are pocket doors. Um, uh, hardware for pocket doors. Hardware for the astragal locks, for moving the door that stays closed up and down. You move that up and down, that moves the lock that keeps it closed. All that done with so much flair in the old days, so much style. Um, there's literally, when you look at the periods of how, um, how they did it, and how complex it was, and how pretty it was. Hey, there we go, maybe that'll help. Does that help? Okay. Um, it gives you an idea that there was a lot of diversity. Why am I bringing up diversity? God, our country needs diversity. In here, you'll see glass knobs dating back to the 1800s, hand cut, literally molded and put together with silver inside of them that hasn't seen the light of day. And, and literally, um, in the sense of no water's been in there and caused it to tint. This is cut into the top. There was... 250 different backgrounds and styles of just styles, excuse me, knobs that were egg shaped, they're jewel shaped, oh, they're rounds, they're swirls. This is a hollow ball uh, of, of milk glass, iridescent actually, um, milk glass. And some of these, they're one of a kind. These are like, not one of a kind, but they're my collections. I don't really have them all for sale. Eventually they have to be sold because I won't be here anymore. But um, these, these, some of these you can see like this was actually poured around and then ground off on the top. And uh, everybody has uh, um, uh, my collections, I said. This is actually for cabinets. These are called sandwich knobs. Um, as you look through, at one time, each of these glazes was patented. So that was a patented glaze. That was a patented glaze. That was, these are all doorknobs made out of wood. Oak. Walnut. Um, oh, there's another That's a glaze over clay. 18, oh, probably 50s? 60s? And then the French, of course, brought in the introduction of all the China. 
And chinaware is uh, doorknobs. Don't hold up real well, but they're pretty. Europe as a whole, Europe does levers. They don't like doorknobs in Germany and other places. They tend to like levers. But in America, we have so many doorknobs. Uh, there, look at the patterns. They use that. That's an oak. There's different shapes. Of, you can see all the shapes. That's just all wood. And that's nearly 1800. Here's granite. Not really, it's a glaze. Oh yeah, by the way, for those of you who don't know, if you lived in a house anywhere up in the north or the south at one time, let's see, can we see these? Mm, see that, different colors. Black, brown, white. Now, why did I pull those out of there? Well, I wanted to point out to you, let's just say that you were a servant working in a house in Pennsylvania where I toured through, for example, and you had the servants' areas, and you had the masters' areas. What do you think they used to distinguish who went where and where you weren't allowed to go? Code. Symbolism. Keep your place. Keep your mask on. Don't enter here without gloves. This is just pocket door handles. These are all for doorbells. You can actually take a modern, cheesy-looking doorbell with a black button, put it behind here, and still be able to use it. And have some really cool-looking doorbells. Uh, stuff like that. Now, this I personally don't like. This Somebody shined up an old doorknob and put some urethane on it, made it all pretty. Some people got to have it that way. So you put urethane on it, it stays that way for a long time. And I personally like a tint. This is actually later on when they started pressing it. It's called a rot. Rot means they, they, they literally press that pattern into a piece of metal as opposed to cast it. This is 1890s in, in bronze. And it's damaged. It's not even collectible because it's got a big old dent in the back. 1890, I was close. Yeah. And then that's in bronze. That's really hard. And this is a cast iron version. Really dirty. Uh, cast iron was what they did, so you still had a fancy knob, but for poor people that wanted to look rich. Ah, oh, man, oh, man. Just think. Everything was matched up in those days. Sets, and people could afford to have houses, they were just full of the most incredible stuff. Now, if you go back far enough, 1860s, 70s, um... Look at some of the stuff we made. I love these because this one you can, just for the bathrooms, just glue, move in and close it. Don't have to have the key. And uh, you can have a key. You can have that. And then this also has a spring over here that you can change out using a leaf rake tine and make that all usable again. Can you see that? Yeah. Beautiful, isn't it? That's a bronze wash finish over cast iron. Um, some of the stuff that you see, oh goodness, talk about old. This is a little newer, slotted screw, but so it gives you some age. But look at that. Um, you put that on something for effect. It gives you one heck of an effect. The detail that went into these. Now this is one that's got the pick proof. This is high technology. So if you look at that, that's a little button up at the top. Up at the very top there. That's actually what we got in trouble for when we were kids. For if you lift it up on it, you lift it in an old house. That locks it automatically when you close the door. The next one down, though, makes a pick proof is that second piece coming out. That is super high tech for 1800s. Then down below where that star is, there's a bolt on there that comes out that's associated with that key. So you got several keys. One little tiny key for an override key. And then you have up at the top of the square where your knob went through. So this is your lesson on some really cool hardware. And... Uh, um, and it is reusable for a hundred years. Early, early, early. Okay. I'm oh, sorry. This is... There we go. This is actually... Oops. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. That's actually got a... Paused. I'm sorry about that. This... Literally, you didn't turn the knob. You go up to the door and you'd squeeze... And that would be how you get in. So, that goes back to the 1840s. So, 
I'm showing you all this mainly so you know if you want to do a project guys oh these are reproductions going into the 1950s yeah they look old but they're not that's how you can tell it's a hardware on them some of them had emblematics there's so many kinds so many kinds the Piccadilly Hotel Chicago um, this is that broken leaf pattern I told you about this is real common um, Colombian styles Yes, and I haven't even unpacked all my other boxes yet. So, this is primarily, this time around, I was meant to go ahead and give you all an idea of what's available in my hardware. Because I need to thin down, perhaps, a little bit. I've been told I may not need this much. I've actually told myself that. I love this. This is, i got to tell the story real quick. This is fun. Okay. Once upon a time, the banks had so much power, they required everybody to get insurance and happen to have a brother-in-law, a woodsman of the world, to send you to. See the W-O-W. -W. And then go down there and get your insurance and guarantee they get paid, and then you can get a loan. Oh, that's so sweet. You still do that kind of stuff. Hmm. No, I like it the other way around. You do it this way, and it says, Mom. Da -da -da. Mom. And then right through there, you take a picture of mom and post it right in there. Laminate it, okay, so she can't get... And then you put that on your daughter's room or your son's room about the right time in life. You kind of know what I mean. And let them know we're always watching. So, with that said, I'm going to show you some of the glass. Isn't that beautiful? This is some of the stuff we have. Oh, somebody said they actually knew how to do glass and lead painting on the glass. All that stuff. Because a lot of that, that's actually painted on and then baked in the kiln. Amazing. This is just hinges, lots of hinges, and of course, can you see that? Wow letters, man. It's actually an old letter box that says W-O-W -W on top. So anyway, all of this, again, oh man, have you heard the story that in the 1900s or the 1900s, radium that glows like this was so popular, people were painting their kids with it and stuff, and then when their bones started going to heck and they started dying of cancer later on, that was a bad thing. They actually had a Geiger counter. It shows a reading on those. This is Robin's Egg Blue again. And this is a beautiful little knob here. It's in a, in a butterscotch. Such a beautiful color. So things like this. All the stories on all this stuff. How can we let it go? And I don't want to let it go. I want our children's children to know it existed. I want it to stay being used. I want it to stay being appreciated. Oh, you'll love these. Check this out. This, da, 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 isn't that the coolest old faucet? Yeah. There's like a pair, there's like a couple pairs. Um, those are interesting. One of them has, uh, the difference of course is that porcelain handle. I have a bunch of those porcelain handles for replacements. But would you believe, of course, they're all different. The spline inside of them is different, stuff like that. This, my friends, is a shower head. That's about 12 and a half pounds of nickel plated, best you can buy shower head on the planet in its day. And see why. I mean, it is fine. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six heads that split, and you take them out, clean them. Everything's serviceable. Made out of brass with a nickel plating on it. Um, <laughs> they just didn't want it to break. They want it to last a lifetime. Imagine that, a whole lifetime. <laughs> yeah, you got it. Some of these like this. This is cold. This is kind of an old one. There's like a spring top on it. So you turn it, it turns itself off again for those people that aren't smart enough to turn their own faucets off. Stuff like this. I mean, just even for art. They're actually fixable. Actually usable. Yeah, the green knobs. I like them too. Hard to, they're about, oh geez, they're very expensive nowadays on those green knobs. You can find them. If you ever find a red knob, oh my gosh. A really, truly red knob. Not, not one that's dyed red. No chips, original, new, shoot, 500 bucks probably, maybe more, 1,000 bucks. They're like the, the, the those teeth on hands. I just don't find them. They're really, I looked and looked and looked. Check this out. Brackets, I love the old brackets. These are some of the, I, I collect, obviously. How do you go out there and get this many onesies? Actually, that's a pair. No, different sizes. 
Um, oh yeah, some of you know, like you know what the difference is on these? Some of those are chalk. I mean, these originals, and some of them are not. This is a sink holder, for example. Mounts on the wall. That's to hold the old sinks, cast iron sinks. These are the kind of things that you can find out of the uses for and do it again. Otherwise, there's so much iron in that thing. It's sixty cent, uh, sixty dollars, a thousand pounds. You sell it to China. I make a. I mean, that's a lot of money. go find that in in mine it, turn it into iron, shape it, turn it into something beautiful like that, and then go sell it to them in a pile of junk for sixty dollars a thousand pounds because some crackhead found it and stole it from you. And that's the problem. They say fix up the old neighborhoods. Yeah, well then you protect the old neighborhoods. Oh, put all your money. You're not allowed to take all the parts out of it. Yeah, well then go ahead and stop the guys from burning them and stealing the parts. How can you fix it up if somebody's going to go ahead and? Burn it when you're done. You can't sell it to anybody because nobody's going to pay you $250,000 or $500,000 because you restored. Make more of these. Yeah, oh, I need more of those. Okay, great. Make one. Uh huh. No, can't do it. So the problem is we can't just remake the past. So what we do is we take the parts and we make smaller houses, use the parts and make cooler stuff. Um, things like this. These are, uh, oops, I'm sorry. This is called the uh, townhouse hinges. They allow you to get pretty far from the wall. Um, all this kind of stuff, the rarities, and unless you're used to seeing this kind of stuff, you think, oh my gosh, they don't exist anymore, but they do. Now this is actually a cast iron and brass and bronze. There's lots of different materials. <coughs> this is important. <coughs> Something like this, cast iron with paint on it, you put it in a crock pot, like you would use in a kitchen, and you put one tablespoon of whisk, laundry detergent, cook it for an hour, and all that will come off of there, and that baby will look like, 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 like that, or better. You can even clean these up and get the dirt out of them, and then look even better. And uh, you can make them look like, like this. This is a really early hinge. The reason you can tell it's so early is it has only two barrels. Each of those is a barrel, so you can see how that goes together to form a hinge. With, with finials. Now they wear out over time. And so consequently, they don't, they don't last well without showing that wear. And so sometimes, you can see like this, they actually put a bearing in there, another piece to wear. And then that way, the door, look at the thickness of that. And the finials. And then this part stuck out. You can see that on the door. And this one was actually patented in 1870. Oops. I'll look at it for us because you can't see and I keep forgetting. Uh, all right. 1871. You might be able to see that. Patent date, November 21st, no less. We don't want to be, uh, you know, beautiful. Beautiful pieces. Those are the kind of things that you want to go ahead and put in a house if you can. I mean, they're beautiful. This is another good set for, this would be into a closet. But look at the key. It's a tiny key. This is typically more for a wardrobe, but that's a pretty darn heavy-duty wardrobe. Made out of a brass machine. You can tell by the way it's been cut. Incredible piece there. Solid brass. Expensive. Nobody does this anymore. Can't afford the materials. So if you want to do some fun stuff, you can buy this kind of stuff for much less than you can make it for. And you can buy copies, but they're not going to be made as nice. And so whether it's um, door plates for your doors or, or kind of crazy stuff. This. Isn't this beautiful? What are you going to do with that? Anything you want, if you own it. But that's, that's made to mount through the back. Um, half of it is just being able to make cool stuff. Oh, goodness. Now, sometimes you run across things you just can't be without. Stained glass. Etched on it. A pattern. I've got two of those and the door that goes with them. You know, you get into the old glass like I do, and sometimes, let's see if we can do this, old stuff. That stuff is American versus overseas European glass. European glass isn't near as nice or worth as much. This and this side, but this side you see the jewels, and it's those jewels that make it so valuable, and this is American glass again. Oh. Isn't that beautiful? It almost looks like a smiley face. 
uh, frowning, excuse me, frowning face with red eyes. Because if you look at it from this side, ah, look at that. Now, quick quiz, people, all you who don't know stained glass, why is red the most expensive color? Yeah, I do have railroad artifacts. Red is the most expensive color because you have to add gold to the molten glass to get it to turn red when it congeals, when it cools. And so you want to drop your gold wedding band in there and tell your wife you gave her some red glass. It should just be thrilled. No, maybe not. Not if it's a wedding band. Pick some different gold. My advice. Anyway, um, these are the many treasures, and I'm going to go ahead and get off now, but I just want to give everybody kind of a tour of my world of hardware. And uh, actually, this is gold. In my opinion, what is the value of a dollar? Well, it depends on how you spend it. What do you want? If you want to get this stuff, you want to go buy some new and have it. Oh, wait. Never mind. Nobody makes it new. Scratch. Um, let's just say you wanted to buy it and be able to go ahead and... Uh, create with it then you're gonna to have to find it in the home depot oh no not so hmm. no you won't find it and that's the point these are off of the old fire i mean uh, uh wood burning stoves i have about 300 of these feet if you bolt them on or put it on to something else you can use it for a lot of things but i must have different kinds at least lots of threes uh tiles for doing showers i've shown you those before but they make great tile shower coverings on the wall and you can take them off put them on again use them again all this kind of stuff again. Salvage, 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 salvage. Please, guys. Today's tour, lecture, story, video. What do you want to call it? Political free journalism? No, I'm not a journalist. So. I actually was, and I dropped journalism to become an English American Lit major. Because I would have had to drive over to the other campus in Tampa. I was living in St. Petersburg. You can see this let's see okay yeah okay what you have here is fireplace mantles wait a second and there we go and these are fireplace mantles including the bottoms and what i did on these was to go ahead and uh add a mirror on the back with the bottom and then this part right here, I must have a hundred of these in different shapes. And this is cast iron, circa 1890. Hey, you see me in there, look at that. Hey, I can show it to you better. And so I got all these, these surrounds and some of them are art deco, some of them are squared, some of them are round arched. And so all those 150 of them maybe, all new old stock, 1890s. And this is what you could do with it. Uh, oops, this is, hmm, that was one of those bad guests. Yeah, I remember him. Okay, anyway, it makes a nice display area you can have in the bathroom. It's, you know, again, be creative with the old stuff. Build cool new stuff. Okay. Oh, yeah, by the way, I do have these. These, that's actually Frank Lloyd Wright Halopane glass. One of them says hardware. And the other one it says paints. But these are out of Buffalo, New York. I brought them down one time all back. And uh, they're actually uh, really nice. But the panes themselves, little tiny panes are worth so darn much. You can't afford to hardly sell the whole thing as one. One last glimpse, guys. I said I had a few more doors. That would be about another thousand or so over here. And over here, oh, that's a beautiful red glass on that one right there. That's all red glass. Behind it, there's a set of maybe three or four of those tall doors under varnish still. Those are pocket doors, pocket doors, regular doors. And, oh, yeah, we might have a little bit of vintage lumber. Now, I know I showed you the other Oh, yeah, isn't this great? Like, oh, yeah, oh, look at that. Is that not just satisfying to look at? That was a barter. If anybody wants to barter, I love barter. That was a tree brought to me from Montana and returned for some doors and windows. If you want to do that, please, please do that, do that, do that. Bring me these kind of trees. Okay, now behind me over here, see this? Way back there, there's a wall. That's a stack, oh, 14 feet high. In front of it's another stack, 12 feet high. In front of that's another stack, 10 feet, 12 feet high. 
And some of that, that's upper headers all done with the tops, bottoms, the trim, everything, moldings on them, 1 by 12s. Uh, trim for round doors and windows, tongue groove flooring, siding. Uh, endless doors, lots of doors, beautiful doors. Look at that door. Windows, windows, windows. Now, if you like sashes, if you like windows, different types of windows. Here's a nice type. Look at that. That's actually a door in the sense it's usable as a window. But you see the glass, the reflection, how that ripples? That's how you can tell old glass is the ripple. These are, for example, I have a bunch of this new old stock. Never been installed. Window sashes, all built, ready to go, even in pairs. Some of them even have the original hand-blown glass in them in sets. Back over there, all sorts of cool stuff. Siding, flooring, 1x12s. This is a beautiful batch. See if you'll be able to see it or not. That's really long, and that's weathered, all weathered, tongue and groove, 8 inch wide. Amazing stuff, four, 16 feet long. On the back walls over there, you'll see siding as much as 20 foot long, T111 or T117. Sidings, new what's called them. Um, these are actually pieces that are new old stock again, never been installed. And it's not like there's just one or two. These are pieces out of Cyprus, made in the 1800s. Whoops, let's see. Out of trees that had to be a thousand years old at the time. And this is all collected by a doctor one time and saved out of the E.F. Smith & Brothers collection of stuff that they'd been selling all over Texas. So these are new old stock Cypress, never been installed. And when I say it's not all of it, when I say that, I mean, here's more. You see hand-blown glass made in the 1870s or 1890s probably. And then all of these are more window sashes, windows, sashes, these are sets. Still packaged up. And I said fireplaces. All of these. All of this stuff. So you can see why I might need help. We'll get out of there. And be able to do some stuff. Isn't that beautiful? The textured glass. These are big old three foot by three foot industrial size sashes. I found 66 of these underneath the house just piled up. This is Wayne's coat. Five inches wide, three quarters of an inch thick, no nails. That was on the side of a room going down 30 foot on each side. All that's piled up here. That typically goes for about nine, ten dollars a square foot. This has got 11 beads in it. Three quarters of an inch thick. There's a whole stack of it over there. Flooring, beadboard, and trim. Does anybody ever go out by trim? Nope, somebody could say face. Look at all these. Anybody got any ideas what you could build? I bet you do. Why don't we do that? Trim. Let's just say you need some crown. Or you need some, any kind of trim, any kind of trim. Narrow oak flooring, thin. Porch posts. Or hey, how about entire stair sets? Or that's the good stuff, that's double sided, double beaded, both sides are beaded on both sides, inch thick, tongue and groove. You can build a wall just by standing it up, putting it together. Heads, tops of headers, all this stuff. So, wow. Right. That's it, guys. Hey, look at that. End of a house. Easy. That's all you can handle. I know. I went too long again. Ah, but you do have an idea, at least, of what treasures are here. Look at the textures. Barnwood. Lots of barnwood. I must have a couple linear miles of barnwood. So, we want to go ahead now, after being um, out of business for a few years, you might say, just mothballed, we want to come back to life and get rid of some of this stuff so we have some room. 
Incidentally, that is a stairwell starting from there, popping up over there. It's all to code, seven inch risers, 12 inch treads, 42 inch width actually, so it actually allows for you to use it for commercial application. What cost you ten, fifteen thousand dollars to build it? You could buy it for maybe five or six. There's a whole counter, like in the old days in the soda bar, when they had short, short people. So that needs to be picked up a little bit to be comfortable. Um, all these things I want you to go ahead and share in. How do I say share in? I want you to go ahead and come up with projects, and if you want to, I'm going to finance your projects by helping you get these materials on your location. And then once it's on your location. You'll be able to do stuff and pay me back and not have paying interest. I don't believe in interest. You can tell I got a few things, a few things. And uh, so my feeling is if I can help make all of your lives better by sharing in some of those things, then I want to do that. I want to make it possible for everybody here to be able to build their own house. Who? Blind y'all. So, if I can do that and get you into building a house out of salvage, all American, no toxins. Look at those doors. Oh, look at that beautiful top on that. If I can get you all to do that. Wow, what a blessing. These were church pews. 16 inches long, square nailed, with a railing. 16 foot long, no knots. That's the back of the church, church pews over on San Bernard. It was a Methodist church, been around for 120 years. And they wanted to get rid of all the pews. And I was more than glad to volunteer to go buy them for a very reasonable price. Um, over here is a ticket window out of a railroad depot. Um, make a great bar, put a piece of glass in it. Those are the kind of things that you can turn into something and save them for another hundred years instead of making new. You don't have to cut a tree down. You don't have to do any machining on it. All you have to do is make it useful. These are houses I still need help figuring out and finishing up and moving out there so people can stay in them. But all this material out here, all the sinks, this is a rare sink. This is earthenware, porcelain, crackled. But look at the inside. It's dirty. It's actually though very nice. And it's got a drain, very unusual drain. Comes up and down. That thing weighs several hundred pounds. I do have a few more. Again, how does one accumulate all these things in a single lifetime? Look at this. Can you see that? Yeah. This is the top of a window. Yeah. These are sets, upper and lower sets, still in their cases with the glass. Hand blown. See the wavies? Hand blown glass. Normally sells for $20 a square foot. I got lots and lots and lots of hand blown glass. Cabinets, windows. I'm actually going to use this. But Aren't these kind of things beautiful? How can people throw them away? Anyway, this is fun. If you would go ahead and share, maybe we can go ahead and get more of this back into use. Some of it I really want to have happen. There's some gothic windows hidden away. Two of those. Make a beautiful chapel. Actually, the other eight did. It's out in Bastrop. Beautiful chapel. If you help, elders teaching the kids, then we can go out there and take these beautiful boards like this and build beautiful things. And those beautiful things will last for another hundred years. If we do that, then someday, maybe someday, you look at what was going on way back years ago in Houston. Poverty area dwellers questioned parks priorities. What was it about? 1970 style, Northeast Houston. 
fun stuff. Yeah, the point is, guys, we don't want poverty, we don't want war, we want to save the best we have, we want to save our treasures, we want to turn them into careers, we want to turn them into houses. That's what I'm here for, guys. It's been way too long. Ah, oh, Karen, you're on the right track. Thank you, thank you for telling me, too. I need that sometimes. I quit building because I didn't want to be an employer that had everybody hitting them. Either the employees hit me up, want me loaning money for no interest, breaking my tools, stealing my tools, taking a year and a half unemployment from me for six months of work they failed at, but I didn't document them good enough. My son passed away. That was uh, 10 years ago. I worked 80 hours to 100 hours a week to build my little empire, my little legacy for my son. It didn't work out. He didn't last as long as I did. But it brought me around. You know, why I quit, that's why I quit. Yeah, use doors when you can. Yeah, privacy wall, absolutely. Put some old hinges on them, man. It's a great way to do it. You know, if you go ahead and take all this old material, look at this. It's going to waste. Dog houses, chicken coops to make food out of for families. How do I teach people to do this? How do I inspire them and motivate them? I, I'm lost. I've been trying for 15 years and sometimes, although I know it's not always true because I get, thankfully, people tell me this. That they are doing stuff. That they are making a house. That they've, they've broken away from the system and that they're inspired and motivated and that's what this is all about, guys. Otherwise, why is a guy walk around like this and waste all of his time? I tried to save this. These are good old radiators. Oops. Look at these. Out of Quincy. But we had somebody visiting and he smashed the living crap out of it and didn't bother to tell us about it. But if you take a campfire and you take water and run it through copper tubing and feed it into here inside the house, you can actually make a heater in the house using water without a lot of pressure so it's not dangerous. So you want to go ahead and think about how do you use these old things again? Because these are abundant. They throw these away all the time for the scrap. The scrap value. That's crazy. Uh, we have a new toy. This is duct tape. Duct tape. Everybody needs duct tape or something, right? Look at that. He loves duct tape at this moment. Look at that. He even makes sure I don't lose my duct tape. So all this is projects and dreams and everything that never happened. This is having people here to help, that care to give a damn, that never came. This is, why do you keep building if, you know, why? Why do you keep working your ass off? Look at all this beautiful wood. I mean, it's not even going to rot. Look at this, it's all been, let's, let's, let's just use that to make doll houses and all this stuff. It can sit out here years and it's going to be good. Why? Because it was 800 years old when it was cut. And it's real strong wood. Now we grow out a tree in 15 years and it rots. <sighs> yeah, I have a lot of good materials. Unfortunately, a lot of them are going to rot. You should see the other warehouses. And I do it one day at a time. No doubt about it. If I didn't believe that way, I wouldn't be here. But I will say this. The days do go fast. So let's just go ahead and finish up. And uh, one of these days, maybe we'll get a chance to have you guys all go over here and visit. Uh, walk around the place. Get a chance to see what we can do with old plowshares. <laughs> weapons into plowshares. Plowshares back to weapons. It's a cycle. But we try to use the best of the past not to cut and kill. But to build. Join me. Share. Pure Savage Living. And don't forget about Wibblery and Wub. I hadn't mentioned it much. A world union of beings trying to make this all happen together. I bet we could do it. The trick is, what is a human being these days? Are you being everything you can be? Thanks. Love you all. Yes, I agree. Let's get to work. Alright though? It's not the top. It's the walk.